The mind is complex and can be fragile, especially when things seem to bend reality or happen with no explanation at all. And where else do you post the most bizarre things that happen in your life? Apparently it's Reddit. Enjoy. This one is from Redditor, oh posterity. My childhood friend was about 15 and home alone over a long weekend while his parents were traveling. But on a Saturday night around 7 or 8 p.m., he was in his bedroom upstairs when he suddenly heard his mom call up the stairs to come get dinner. He popped his head out of his room, confused as hell, but no one was there. So he called back down. Mom, are you home already? There was a long beat. But then after a few seconds, his mom walked slowly around the corner, coming from where the kitchen was, and looked straight up at him from the bottom of the steps. She just smiled and then walked right back into the kitchen. My friend was frozen in place for a moment, but then again, he heard her call him to come get dinner. He said the only reason he didn't just walk down those stairs to see what was going on and why she was home so early was because he thought it was strange that she didn't talk or utter a single word when she appeared. Like, why did she just smile at him and then walk away? It didn't sit right. The fact that he never saw her open her mouth. He could hear her. He could see her. Both plain as day. But never at the same time. That smallest of details is why he chose instead to slam the door shut, lock it, and call his mom. She answered immediately, and was still several states over, hundreds of miles away. They ended up calling the police for fear of an intruder or something, but they never found anyone in the house. It was all locked up with the security system on and everything. He didn't sleep there alone after that. From Possibly Unhinged I live with my wife, it's about 10 o'clock at night, taking the trash to the dumpster in the alley behind the complex. The complex has six two-story apartments, the front door of each facing south. We lived in number five, and if you were to walk outside once you open the door, there's a little raised landing where you would put a welcome mat, step off the landing, and you're on a walkway. You have to go left or right, because there's a very tall wooden fence separating the complex from the large house next door. Turn left, go through a rod iron gate, and the dumpster is right there. It's a very short distance from my door to the dumpster, and once there, you can see down the entire length of the walkway. The entire area is well lit, so it was easy to see my wife open the gate and head up the walkway toward our apartment. I waved at her and had no idea how she didn't see me. I almost yelled but didn't want to scare her or startle the neighbors. So I just started walking the short distance between us. And as I walked up, I saw the door to our apartment open. Of course, I figured she opened it. But it was dark, so I couldn't actually see her do it. Then she kind of leaned in, and I could hear her calling my name. But she wouldn't walk into the apartment. When I got behind her and said hi, she became frantic, asking me how did I do that? How did you get back outside? I explained I'd been at the dumpster emptying the trash, to which she interrupted me and said, No, you opened the door for me and walked upstairs. I called after you and you turned your head and looked at me but didn't say anything, you just kept walking. And then she started crying. I searched the apartment and found nothing. We moved about six months later to the house we're at now. One day, shortly after we moved in, my wife thought she saw me walk past the window that looked into the backyard from the kitchen. But it wasn't. And again, she said it looked just like me. That it walked all the way around the house before disappearing. And then she realized I was in the bedroom. From Redditor, that's my onion jerk. <laughs> this happened to me when I was six. I was in my bed sound asleep when I felt the mattress beside me slowly shift as if someone was laying beside me. I opened my eyes and there was a full-grown adult woman beside me. She wasn't scary, just normal looking, 
but she was a stranger in my bed. Of course, I opened my mouth to scream, but before I did, she put her fingers to her lips as if to tell me to be quiet. Her eyes looked very frightened, and she seemed to be silently pleading with me to be quiet. Of course, I screamed my guts out, and I heard my parents getting up out of bed. The strange woman just looked very sad. Her eyes were full of tears. Dad turned my bedroom light on, and as soon as he did, she just wasn't there anymore. No sign of her at all. I slept in my parents' room that night. I was very scared, but even more so, I had a deep feeling of sadness. This was decades ago, but I still remember it very clearly. I've had a few run-ins like that, different people, never that same woman. From Redditor Sadshire, I was getting ready for bed in the bathroom. I had the door open as I was talking to my husband who was sitting on the bed. I was having an entire conversation with him. I even looked at him a couple times. Then he stopped answering me. So I repeated myself. And then he answered me. But from the living room. Now the living room was past the bathroom and I never saw him walk by. There was no way I would have missed it. He comes into the bathroom and said, were you talking to me? I said, yes. He said, oh, I didn't hear you. I was in the living room. I asked how long he was in the living room. And he said, for a long time. But he was going to get ready for bed now. I asked if he was ever in the bedroom in the last 10 minutes. And he said, no, he's been in the living room the whole time. He swears he was never in the bedroom. So I don't know who I was seeing or talking to, but it terrified us both. Gives me shivers. I can still see it sitting on the bed. From Redditor Zushiba. When I was in high school, I worked as a courtesy clerk at Albertsons. People were always telling me that they saw me somewhere in town when I wasn't there. One day I got out of class at the end of school, went straight to work. I wouldn't get home until just after nine that night. So I walk in just after nine and said hi people to my mom, my sisters. And they all looked confused. My mom asked me where I was coming from. I said I had been at work. My mom and older sister both said, no you haven't. You came home hours ago and said hi, people, and went upstairs. I said, no, I didn't. I hadn't been home since I left at 7 o'clock this morning. So we all four went upstairs to my room to see who it was that came home. My door was closed. I usually leave it open. The light was on. The TV was on. Open the door. And no one was there. But wait. It gets weirder. In high school, we had a secondary school called the Skill Center. It was a place that had a collection of vocational classes you could take. For instance, I took TV broadcasting, web design, forestry. One day, I was waiting for the bus to leave the Skill Center after my broadcasting class, and a teacher I had never met ran up to me and said, Sushiba, you need to come back to class. I had never been in her class. But apparently, I had been missing for the last few seasons. I tried to explain I wasn't in her class, but she seemed to know who I was, so she took me to the office, thinking I was ditching. We go in and tell the office clerk my name, and she looks up at me. Sure enough, there I am in broadcasting, just like I said. But there I am under my stepdad's last name in her class. I went by both names. It was a bit confusing, but both names were relatively unique. So it's not like there would have been a random person that looks just like me in her class. It's just extremely unlikely. I had been in her class for the entire semester until I mysteriously stopped showing up. I had turned in work and everything. Even had my friggin' signature on it. 
one day this doppelganger simply stopped showing up. No one ever saw him again. Another one from That's My Onion Jerk. One time when I was 14, staying at my friend's house. He had bunk beds and I called the top. We went to sleep like normal, but in my dream, I saw a hooded man standing in the doorway. He walked in, stood staring at the both of us in our beds. When he looked at me, I felt ice cold and sick to my stomach. There was an overwhelming sense of dread running through me. I didn't want to draw attention to myself by calling for help, so I stayed dead quiet. The hooded man came closer and leaned down toward my friend in the bottom bunk. I was scared for my friend, but relieved that its attention wasn't on me. I remember feeling ashamed of my cowardice. There was an ungodly noise coming from the hooded figure. A low, deep rumbling that grew louder and louder until it hurt my ears. I remember hoping that it would awake my friend's parents, but at the same time, felt like we were trapped alone in there. The man continued his scream rumble until a never-ending swarm of insects started flying out of his hood. They were flying all around the room. I remember them buzzing my face, but I was too afraid to move to swat them away. The bugs kept flying out, and soon the room was filled with them. I don't remember what happened next, but I must have passed out. The next day, we were talking about how we slept, and my friend's dad asked if we had a good sleep. I replied that I had a nightmare, then it scared the crap out of me. My friend spoke up and said he had a nightmare too. This is where it gets weirder. My friend said that he dreamed that he had thousands of bugs crawling all over him. I explained my nightmare, and it creeped us both out. Luckily, they moved house not long after because there was no way I was ever going to sleep in the house again. From an anonymous person. My first year of university, a girl I lived with had her friend over one night. He'd been shooting footage on London Bridge at 3 o'clock in the morning to get some shots of it being abandoned at night. He was really riled up about something and insisted we watch it with the audio all the way up and listened closely. Around the one minute mark, I heard a low, deeply menacing voice whisper slowly, As you walk by the devil's path, then something unintelligible. Then, it felt so final and evil. He turned to us and said, did you hear that? I said I heard a voice. What did it say? So I told him what I'd heard. His face went white. You heard the exact same thing as I did. And you're not the first. My housemate said she'd heard the same thing as well. He hadn't heard the voice when he was on the bridge, only when he was working on the audio. But he'd shown it to other people who had heard the same thing. I don't really have any other paranormal encounters, so this one might not stand out. But I'm generally wary of paranormal things, and this scares the crap out of me. There was some sort of presence on the bridge that night, and it wanted to make itself known. And I don't ever want to know what that was. This one is submitted by Gorilla Samurai. Working on ships, some are pretty old. And you hear some weird stories. The gift shop manager would rant and rant about how his team was lazy. And how they kept trying to weasel out of working because they claimed to see a little girl running around the gift shop. One night we were having coffee with the head of the photography department, and he's extra salty, talking about how he'll have to do an extra couple of hours because of his team. In the middle of the night, I get a call from the photo manager. She tells me, our friend in her cabin is crying and shivering. So I run over, thinking he got some bad news or something. Turns out he was working in his office. 
The door faces a long mirror that covers most of the wall, closed section. And after hearing giggling, he saw the shadow of a child through the reflection, as if she was leaning to look into the door while also trying to hide. But only in the reflection. He says he jumped up and ran out. The giggling and sounds of tiny feet running around the shop and then into the casino. I'm not big into the paranormal, but the following day I mentioned this to my boss, and she told me that about 20 years ago, a little girl came out of the theater with her parents. She was running ahead of them around the gift shop, but eventually went into the casino, coming out at the atrium. A drop with glass lifts that go from deck 12 to 5, so a good drop. She leaned over the railing to look down, lost her balance, fell, breaking her neck on impact, and dying. Apparently, it was a common sighting at the shop in the casino. From Redditor, Rabbi Raccoon. <laughs> Several years ago, some friends and I were driving through some of the millions of small towns around North and South Carolina, border of the mountains. It was well after midnight. My friend looks behind us and sees a pair of headlights coming up on us. Quickly. Like easily going 60 or 70 miles per hour when the speed limit was around 25. No signs of stopping. So my friend pulls over to let the car pass. What passes us is two lights. Just lights. Far too bright to be a firefly or any other luminescent creature. As bright as headlights, if not brighter. But they're not attached to anything. No car. Nothing. Just two lights. Booking it down the road. From Redditor, Clarkster, 1964. When my youngest son was about three years old, we were eating at a restaurant in town, and he got a bit restless. I decided to take him for a walk, and as I held the door open, he got away from me and made a break for it. He got away from me and made a break for it. Pedestrian area, so it was safe. He bolted into an adjacent site which had a ruined chapel with info boards for tourists. I found him staring up at the chapel ruins. I asked him, what are you doing, mate? His reply? A long time ago, I got married here. I said, what? My son replies again. A long time ago. And then a switch flicked. He was a three-year-old with energy to burn off and was running again. Shook me to my core. From Fresh Kitty Pow Wow. <laughs> I love these names. Teenage girl in the 80s was killed in a freak accident after running away from home in my hometown. Had heard stories for years about people seeing her. She died riding her bike wearing a baseball cap, which is what people had described seeing her wearing. So one night I'm coming home real late, and I was stopped at a red light all by myself, and I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I turn and look, and there she was baseball cap and all, on her bike, staring at me. I then look back forward for a millisecond, look back over, and she was gone. From Redditor, it's float. I was taking a shower when I suddenly heard a faint voice, like a woman sobbing. I got out almost immediately. Apparently, my stepdad had experienced the same thing and had also seen what he thought was a girl sitting on his side of the bed. But me and my mom were both out of state at the time. Our things will randomly go missing and reappear frequently. From Redditor, looks sharp. This one's pretty mild, but I took my dog for a walk. Got home, went to the corner store about five minutes away. When I came back, I opened the door, and my whole house smelled like perfume. 
locked gate, locked house, security cameras, dog that barks at everything. And I live alone. Nobody stopped by. But still, my house smelled like someone ran around spraying Chanel number no. five. It doesn't sound believable, but I'll never be able to explain it. This last one is submitted by Mr. Beef Thighs. You win the name of all names, sir. Anyway, this is my sister's story, and I don't know if it's paranormal or not, but she thought it was spooky. She lived in a tiny little studio apartment one summer and came home to quickly get a bite to eat, wash up, and go back out with friends. She puts some bread in the toaster, goes into the bathroom, wash face, do makeup, etc. And she hears the toaster pop and comes out to get it. But the toast is nowhere to be found. She checks the floors, counters, and everywhere. It was just gone. The toaster was still hot. Apparently, it terrified her. Sounds like she was visited by Slimer. Seems to me, if you see something and you're not sure if it's real, throw something at it. If it bleeds, it's probably real. Let me know if you do this. And also, for legal reasons, I didn't suggest that you hurt someone. And if you have a story you'd like to see featured here, email me at duchessdark.com. 676 at gmail.com. Thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you next time.